It's episode 18 of this special Perfume Parlour haul series and I normally include about four or five bottles in each episode but because it's been a while since I last produced one of these haul videos I've got a whopping eight bottle haul to go through with you today and there's some absolute beauties amongst them. We're at that time of the year now where spring's not too far away uh, but it's still cold enough outside to be rocking some really big hitting deep dark fragrances so I've kind of mixed up this haul a little bit and purchased a couple of fresher ones uh, just so that I've got time to macerate them in time for the spring and summer months. So to find out what's made it into this latest shopping spree stay tuned to this episode of Mags Frags. <laughs> Yes, hello again and welcome to this latest Perfume Parlour episode of Mugs Frags. I'm Paul and like I said in the intro, I've got eight bottles to talk about today. But before I begin today's rundown, if you are interested in picking up any of these bottles that feature in today's video, just to try out for yourself, you can use my unique discount code to get yourself 10% off your first order, which I'll leave a link to down in the description. The link will direct you to a login page and you'll be asked to create a login name and a password but once you've logged in and you set up your account and you've made your purchases your discount will be automatically applied at the checkout for you. And as always guys, uh, like I say in every video, I don't work for the Perfume Parlour and this video is in no way sponsored by them. Uh, so all the opinions that you are about to hear today are my own opinions and I did buy these uh, fragrances with my own money. I do however receive uh, a small commission just for recommending you to join their website. So just by clicking on the link in the description you'll save you 10% while supporting the channel and helping me uh, to bring you some more free content in the future. Okay, so the first one in today's haul goes by the name of Intense Black 2. And the perfume parlor code on this one is 1488. This one is a copy of the brand new Tom Ford Noir Extreme Parfum which uh, only came out a few weeks ago in late 2022 and I did actually do a, a full review of this uh, original when it was first launched so you can also go and check that one out on the homepage of my channel. Uh, but this one is a, a spicy leather fragrance with also a mild booziness that you'll pick up on in the first half of the scent. It opens up with a blend of cardamom, ginger and citrus notes and uh, compared to this original original uh, Noir Extreme version, there is a, a noticeable di uh, difference in the spiciness that you'll be able to pick up on uh, between the two and I find it uh, to be like way more amped up in this one. For the most part though you'll get a rich warm leather accord which comes off smelling really smooth with the uh, vanilla producing a, a really nice amount of creamy sweetness. But like I say there's also some booziness and I get a bit of a brandy or a cognac type uh, a, a liquor accord uh, which is just in the background and it makes this like a, a definite night out kind of scent or one to wear in the cooler months of the year for sure. This perfume parlour copy is pretty much a one-to-one -one clone and they've done an unbelievable job at replicating the overall smell of Noir Extreme Parfum. I've tested them both directly side by side and I can't tell a difference whatsoever and this uh, matches the original in performance uh, in the performance department also and you'll get like a, a full day's wear out of it with a, a decent projection. I wanted to start this whole video with a bang and this one is an absolute no-brainer to put on your next shopping list. It's sexy, masculine and classy and it's one that every man should own and uh, have in his collection. So this is uh, a bit of a 10 out of 10 fragrance for me. Okay, so next up is one called Enchant and the perfume palette card on this one is 1259. This is a copy of Ensalade by Marc-Antoine Barrois and the original version of this only came out last year in 2022 so the perfume parlour didn't waste much time in uh, producing this copy of it. It's a woody aromatic fragrance with a, a top note of rhubarb, uh, in the mid we've got sandalwood and vetiver and the base notes in this are tonka beans and cedar. Okay, so this one opens up with an interesting conflict of sweet, sour and green facets with the tart rhubarb note being the most prominent note in the beginning with the tonka beans producing lots of sweetness after the initial spray and the opening does have a, a very sweet and mildly fruity aroma. But the vetiver and the combination of sandalwood and cedar brings some earthiness to the background for the first five, uh, five minutes or so and I get a sense of smelling rhubarb in its natural environment when it's outdoors and it's still in the ground. 
The Blast of Sweetness is somewhat of a, a fleeting introduction to the scent though, and it soon settles down and the overall aroma becomes much more woody smelling after about the 15-20 uh, minute mark where it's the cedar and the sandalwood that become the dominant notes. And you get a clean kind of pencil shavings type woodiness which is also supported by the tonka beans uh, so it does remain fairly sweet but just kind of not anywhere near as sweet uh, or as intense as what you experience from the initial uh, from the initial spray you might even uh, pick up on almost like a leathery accord from the mix of sweet and woody notes uh, but to me this is uh, more of a masculine smelling fragrance and even though it produces a fairly simple woody and mild mildly sweet uh, sweet aroma it's one that I think might divide opinions um, and it's not a straight up mass appealing type scent like the noir extreme copy that I've uh, just spoken about and for me personally I don't get much of a wow factor from it even though it's uh, pleasant enough and I can't find much to dislike about it but it's just not one that I'd kind of urge you to rush out and try for yourselves and I think there's uh, better ones in today's haul but then again I wasn't blown away by the Ganymede copy at first and uh, now I really like that one so maybe this might grow on me uh, the more that I wear it this is a fragrance that I sometimes think isn't performing uh, and I kind of lose track of it from time to time but then every so often I'll get a huge waft of it and uh, or someone will notice it and tell me that it smells really nice so it definitely does perform pretty well and for me it's uh, kind of a 6 or 7 out of 10 type of fragrance. Right so the next one is called XL House and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1107. This one is a copy of 40 Knots from Zerzhov and it's one of the Perfume Parlor's latest creations but the original was first launched back in uh, 2012. The top notes in this are seawater and woody notes. In the mid we've got ce uh, cedar and salt and the base note in this one are green notes. Yeah, so the original of this one is meant to be inspired by the smell of the inside of a luxury yacht. Uh, but the nearest I've ever come to a luxury yacht is being on a barge floating up the Leeds and Liverpool Canal. So unfortunately, I can't confirm or deny that claim. Uh, but what I can tell you is, is that it's definitely not as fresh and aquatic as you, you might think, judging by the note breakdown alone. In fact, it's not what I'd even describe as a, an out and out fresh fragrance, to be honest. And I get more of a, a warm, semi sweet, ambery smell from it, uh, with a kind of a fair amount of florals, mainly rose, um, some woodiness, and also some light green touches as well. Sure, it does start out uh, fairly fresh for the first 10 minutes or so, and you may get a bit of a fleeting, salty marine vibe for a short period of time, but it's kind of a, a blink of an eye and you'll miss it kind of thing. And for me, this has more of an easy, breezy springtime feel about it with a really nice, um, easy going, laid back character. It's a, a straight up unisex fragrance and I don't think it leans either feminine or masculine and I'd say it smells really rich and exotic but with a, a fairly bright scent profile so this is more of a daytime fragrance that would make for like the perfect work scent. There's nothing challenging in this one whatsoever and I'd say it's a pretty safe blind buy and like I say uh, the springtime is just around the corner and I would definitely recommend this one as a, a really nice little hybrid towards the summertime but mainly what I get from this one is just a, a pleasant silky rose on a polished teak tabletop and if that sounds like something that uh, you'd really enjoy then definitely give this one a go. It performs decent enough and it's one that will definitely get you noticed. So yeah, I would uh, I would recommend this one. Okay, next up is one that I don't actually own a copy of the original. And in fact, I've never smelled the original as it's uh, not available here in the UK. So I can't tell you exactly how accurate this one is, but I'm sure it'll be uh, very close anyway to the original. And this uh, inspired by version goes by the name of Powerful Wood. And the perfume parlor code on this one is 1462. This is a copy of Stronger With You Oud from Emporio Armani and regular viewers to the channel will know that I love the Stronger With You line and I own all of them apart from the Oud version because I think it's uh, exclusive to the Middle Eastern market so I've uh, never actually uh, smelled it. It came out last year in 2022 and contains a, a simple three note breakdown of lavender up top uh, then there's agar wood in the heart of the scent uh, which sits on a base of vanilla. 
Okay, so when you first spray this one, you'll get a really large blast of the oud, but because it's uh, balanced with some freshness from the lavender and also some creamy sweetness from the vanilla, it's not a skanky oud and it produces more of a luxurious, semi-sweet, leathery aroma, which I would say is very masculine, quite dark and very sexy smelling, but it's perhaps not as woody as what you'd find in, in, the, old, in the kind of oud for greatness copy. And I'd say that this is uh, more of a mass appeal Western uh, oud dominant fragrance. There's a, a light sweetness, to, uh, but to my nose, it has more of a powdery texture, so it makes me think uh, of smelling like a brushed suede material. It does smell very expensive, and boy, uh, this absolutely fills a room when you first spray it. And it's the uh, biggest projector in today's haul by some margin, so you won't need to uh, go heavy on the sprays with this one at all. If you like your darker, richer smelling fragrances, then this is one that I'd highly recommend that you try out for yourselves because it's a very powerful scent which enters the room before you do. And I think it's uh, a nice entry into oud based fragrances for anyone that hasn't smelt the note before. Right, so this next one is another brand new creation from the Perfume Parlor. And again, the original only came out a, a few months ago in 2022. So they didn't waste any time uh, recreating this one. Uh, this is called Immunity, and the Perfume Parlor code on this is 1103. This one is a copy of Cologne Shield of Protection by Killian. The top note in this is Green Mandarin. In the mid, we've got rosemary, and the base note is cedar. Right, so from the initial uh, first spray of this, you get a really fresh, juicy green mandarin, which is impossible not to recognise. It smells very realistic and natural, and you actually get the greenness from it, and it smells absolutely lovely. It's not too sweet, and it's more of a tart, zesty mandarin, uh, like smelling the outer skin rather than the fruit itself. You also get the, uh, the, like the green leaves, uh, so you do get a slight bitterness which tingles your nostrils at first, alongside uh, a real nice fresh green accord. As it dries down, you'll start to detect the fresh rosemary, which also adds even more of an evergreen feel. And it's just a really lovely, outdoorsy, fresh, summery smell for the most part, with a really happy, sunny character. Uh, but for me, it's not a £200 niche fragrance smell that I'd expect from Killian. So I was a little bit underwhelmed when I first smelled the original. Uh, but at a tenth of the price, uh, this one's a different story. And if you're looking for a, a really pleasant, mass appeal, Peeling scent for uh, this year's spring and summer season then uh, this is your guy it stays fresh all the way through uh, but you do get some clean woody cedar in the far dry down um, and this is kind of along the uh, similar lines I'd say to Chanel Allure Home Sport or Extreme uh, with that combination of the uh, the bitter orange and the woodiness uh, but I'd say that this is more much more fruitier and sweet than the Chanel uh, so they are a little bit different but they're just in that kind of similar uh, fresh ballpark it's super versatile and a really safe blind buy and the only people that won't really get along with this one are your hardcore fragheads because they'll probably just describe it as being a, a little bit too generic and designer smelling uh, which I would tend to agree with if I was paying £200 uh, a bottle for the original uh, but for under 20 quid, this is a, a super solid pickup. In terms of performance, I didn't think it was the biggest performer when I uh, first tried the original and even this uh, perfume parlor copy for the first time. Uh, but I sprayed it on my shirt yesterday and it was still going really strong this morning uh, when I picked it up to uh, put it in the wash. So you, you'll definitely get a full day's wear out of it with uh, a couple of solid hours of projection before it settles down uh, and, and sits a little bit closer to the skin. I'd say this is uh, perfect for anyone who's just looking for a straight up pleasant signature scent for the warmer months of the year or to just wear casually as a, an everyday fragrance for work. It's ridiculously easy to wear and I must admit it's already started to uh, really grow on me so one I would definitely recommend that you try out for yourselves. Okay so next up is one called Cacao Lover. And the perfume parlor code on this one is 1673. This is inspired by Chocolate Greedy from Montal, which I reviewed a while ago on day 56 of my uh, 365 project. So feel free to also go and check that review out. 
The top notes in this are dried fruits and bitter orange. In the mid, there's cacao and uh, coffee. And the base notes in this are vanilla and tonka beans. Yeah, so this one is for all you indulgent chocolate lovers out there who enjoy really sweet gourmand fragrances. This is a super sweet but intensely powdery fragrance with a, a hint of bitter orange in the background. There's lots of sweetness from the vanilla and the tonka beans in the base, but this is balanced out with some coffee and, and the bitter orange, which brings a hint of tart fruitiness. And also I get a, a touch of nuttiness in the blend with this also. But this is a straight up chocolatey orange smell, so there's no other way really to describe it. It's not, it's not like a, a milk chocolate though, it's more of a, a dry uh, cocoa powder type smell. So if you can imagine putting a spoonful of cocoa powder in a cup and then some dried uh, oranges uh, just before you add any water to it, that's kind of what this smells like and what I get from it. It's absolutely delicious smelling, but I would uh, probably prefer to smell this one as a room scent rather than a fragrance that I'd want to wear personally. But if smelling like uh, a walking, talking chocolate orange sounds appealing to you, uh, then this one might be just right up your street. The performance is huge on this one and it's uh, definitely a, a huge room filler for the first couple of hours and then it does settle down and become less intense and it'll stick around for about the 7 to 8 hour mark before you, you kind of stop detecting it. It smells totally accurate to the original so uh, if a dusty powdery chocolate scent with a hint of orange sounds like something you'll really enjoy then uh, definitely give this one a go and I'm sure you'll, uh, you'll get plenty of compliments from it. Okay so the penultimate one in today's haul goes by the name of Venice and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1788. This is a copy of Casanova 2021 by Italian niche house Tiziana Terenzi and any fragrance that's called Casanova simply has to be uh, checked out and, uh, and purchased by me because you know it's going to be ultra masculine and this one doesn't disappoint. The original version uh, as the name suggests came out in 2021 with top notes of jasmine, bergamot, orchid, fig leaf and powdery notes. In the heart, there's vanilla, pink pepper, cardamom, myrrh, guayaquad, uh, leather and ambergris. And the base notes in this one are tonka beans, oak moss, amber, vetiver, cedar, white musk and ambroxan. So yep, yeah, definitely a lot of notes in this. Yes, yeah, so this is a, a pretty complex fragrance with all sorts going on and it's uh, one of the more challenging ones in today's list but that doesn't mean that it's uh, in any way a bad scent. It just means that if you're not used to niche smelling fragrances uh, or you're not that far into your uh, fragrance journey you might not get what this one's all about and maybe even if you are quite deep into your fragrance journey you may still not really uh, get this one. Uh, it opens up with a mix of earthy notes, florals, amber and green notes and to my nose it starts out with a, a fairly bright medicinal but yet very oily character. It's just a bit weird and it takes a, a little bit of time to get used to it. But as it settles down it transforms into more of a, a powdery leathery fragrance but it retains a bit of that green herbal accord and it just sits in the background. And then you'll also maybe get a resinous amber accord also. Um, so it's just one of those scents where you'll just pick up on different little nuances every time you go in for, a, for another sniff. Sometimes it comes off quite fresh and other times it comes off quite warm and spicy smelling uh, but it's very unique and interesting and it's uh, pretty difficult to describe if I'm honest because there's just kind of so much going on and all the notes seem to just like conflict with one another. It definitely smells masculine and you do get a, a luxury expensive fragrance type vibe from it uh, but it is definitely a polarizing scent which I think uh, newbies will, will dislike but if you're deeper into your, your fragrance journey I think you'll uh, really enjoy this one. It's a, a powerful sharp scent that projects extremely well and it lasts for hours so there's no concerns with its uh, performance. But for me, I'm still on the fence with this one. Uh, I don't love it uh, but I also don't dislike it so I would just say try it out for yourself and uh, let me know down in the comments what you make of it. Okay and the final one in today's haul goes by the name of Great Heights 
and the perfume parlor code on this one is 1483. This is a copy of another one from the house of Tiziana Terenzi and this one is based on a fragrance called Deluxe. The top notes in this are iris, white hyacinth and coffee. In the mid we've got a poppernax, vanilla and Turkish rose and the base notes in this one are cedar, amber, white musk and honey. Yes, so from the initial spray, uh, this one has much more of an instant identity than the Casanova copy and you'll pick up on the Turkish rose straight away and also a pretty large dose of the coffee note uh, which made me think of Oud Cafe at first from Montal and it's definitely in that kind of genre with a, a very similar scent profile. It smells rich and luxurious with a smooth velvety rose mixed with a smoky roasted coffee note. So you get a, a nice balance um, with kind of like, like a Middle Eastern vibe going on. This is much more of a unisex fragrance that I think both men and women will really enjoy equally. Uh, and it's also more mass appealing than the Casanova one that I've just spoken about. But so far, from the ones that I've tried from the Terenzi house, the uh, the Kirka uh, copy remains my favourite. And the Perfume Palette do an absolute cracking job uh, replicating this one, uh, which is... Uh, and it goes by the name of building and the uh, perfume parlor code on this is 1945 if you're interested in trying it out for yourself uh, and this one did feature in one of my early videos so uh, give them all a watch and see if you can come across it it's uh, a really good one but back to this and uh, and overall this is just a very pleasant semi-sweet fragrance with vanilla amber and honey providing the sweetness uh, and there's also a touch of iris and musk so you will get a sprinkling of uh, dustiness um, but this is basically a rose and coffee scent with all the other notes kind of playing more of a supporting role Again, it has a really good performance and if you enjoy rose heavy scents then I'm sure you'll uh, really enjoy this one. Yes, yeah, so in summary, the Tom Ford Noir Extreme Parfum copy that I talked about first in the video is probably the easiest one to recommend out of this particular haul. And the Perfume Parlor did an absolutely quality job and nailed that one both in terms of scent accuracy as well as the performance. And it's one that you definitely need to pick up if you haven't already yet tried it out for yourself. I also really enjoyed the new Killian Cologne Shield of Protection copy uh, now that I've had the chance to kind of wear it a few times but I'd say with that one just be a little bit patient because uh, it can come off a little bit simple and nondescript at first but the more you wear it the more you kind of get to understand what it's all about um, and it definitely does uh, grow on you over time and uh, one that I'm really looking forward to wearing a lot more uh, throughout the, uh, the spring and summer months. But to be honest, this uh, this has been a really solid haul and all of them have been really interesting and I don't dislike any of them. Uh, but maybe the Casanova copy uh, and also the Ans Ansalad copies uh, are the ones that kind of might make you think what's all this about and uh, challenge your senses because they're probably the most unique out of the bunch. Uh, but these videos are only to provide uh, a bit of inspiration uh, so it's all about your own voyage of discovery and uh, not my opinion so if there's been any in the video that you you think might make a really good signature scent for you personally then just give it a go and uh, let me know uh, down in the comments how you get along with them Okay, so once again, that's about it for this latest episode, but I've got plenty more still to come in the series, and I've just ordered another bunch of perfume parlor fragrances uh, for my next uh, haul video, so look out for that one coming very soon. As always, guys, if you've enjoyed the content and you found this video useful, then please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel, which always helps me out with the YouTube algorithms and all that technical stuff. Uh, so once again, thank you very much uh, once again for tuning in to this latest episode. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh, and I'll see you very soon for lots more Perfume Parlor content. Bye-bye for now.